Kenya to Colombia, from Iraq to Korea, in slums, in schools, in prisons, and in theaters. Every day, people gather at TEDx events around the world to hear the best ideas bubbling up in their communities. Today, you are part of a global conversation about our shared future. So what is this TEDx? TEDx is an initiative of the TED Conference, a nonprofit devoted to ideas worth spreading. We grant free licenses to allow TED-like events to spread globally. This event today is based on the TED Conference format and ideals, but is independently organized by your local community. So please make sure to thank the team of volunteers who worked so hard on today's event. It's their ideas, dedication and time that made it all possible. It's they who booked all the speakers. And the views you'll hear today are, of course, those of those speakers, not necessarily of TEDs. But we hope their talks spark an exciting conversation among you. This is a day for curiosity and for skepticism, for openness and for critical thinking, for inspiration and for action. The more you enter into it, the more you'll take out. And now, on with the show. Now, lastly, but surely not the least, we'll hear about how to navigate through our emotions with the topic of the importance of mental toughness. Please welcome Samira Talwar. Hello, everyone. So, have, have you ever felt like you can't do this or can't do that? That you're too shallow to complete this math assignment, or you aren't athletic enough to complete this dreaded 12-minute Cooper run? Yes, I know all of you remember that fair and square. Or have you ever felt like you don't know what you want to pursue in the future, as if you don't really have a goal or a destination? Well, trust me, we've all been there. And if I'm being honest, I still wonder why I took additional maths for my IGCSEs. No, I'm kidding. So here's a little bit about myself. I play tennis competitively and aspire to become a professional tennis player one day. And with my seven years of experience playing the sport so far, one of the most important aspects I've learned is to be mentally tough. Tennis is known to be 50% mental, 50% physical. And I've struggled with containing my emotions, having many frustrating moments and outbursts, which ultimately led to my own downfall. From mine and probably every other tennis player's experience, the idea of being calm and composed on the court, even when you aren't playing your best, is one of the biggest challenges. The ability to clutch during crucial moments really makes a difference in the outcome of the match. So, tennis is full of emotions. Whether it's putting your body through physical, to, through physical exertion, trying to reach every ball, trusting your game in order to execute shots, focusing, strategizing, regaining your emotions, being in the moment, playing point by point, controlling your opponent's mind, and even dealing with anger when you are missing easy shots. Woof, I'm breathless. Yes, the list is endless. I have learned and still am learning how to be in full control of my mind and body during these intense and crucial moments. So now you must be thinking, why am I blabbering on about tennis? Well, what I'm trying to say here is this concept truly applies in every field of life, be it academics, sports, or the arts, etc. So what is all this? The need to be able to adapt to challenges, control your emotions, being confident in yourself, and despite all the obstacles, you keep going. Two words, mental toughness. So to expand, it refers to being able to push past challenges and recovering from setbacks by remaining mentally positive. You need to be mentally prepared for whatever challenge is to come. And when things don't go our way, we remain resilient enough to keep going. And you're as determined to achieve your goal as you were back on day one. Whether you're an athlete, an academic genius, or a musician, or whatever you may be good at, mental toughness is the key to success, no matter what. Think of it this way. You've got to train your mind in order to be stronger than your negative emotions, or you will lose the game every single time. So, there are four parts to mental toughness, a diagram psychologists refer to as the four C's, which was originally developed by Dr. Peter Clough. So, these are control, challenge, commitment, and confidence. They each display two different skill sets that you can develop. So let's delve into these four components and learn how to train your mind so that you can overcome any challenges that you may face. All right, so let's start with control. 
Your control represents your self-esteem, how you deal with emotions when you are faced with adversities. Okay, let's put this into perspective, all right? Okay, let's say we're in English class, okay? The teacher asks, all right, students, so how is punctuation used effectively in Macbeth? You have two minutes to think about your answer, and then I will pick on students to share their ideas with the class. Q, panic, anxiety, dread. You start overthinking in your mind. You look at your peers, hoping one of them will help you. You fixate your eyes on the clock. Tick, tick, tick. Punctuation, punctuation, punctuation. Next thing you know, the teacher goes, okay, time is up. Now I will pick on Samira. So, what do you think about how punctuation is used effectively in Macbeth? Uh, uh, yeah, so punctuation, the effect in Macbeth, opportunity wasted. You panicked, you didn't stay calm, you couldn't control your emotions, and they got the better of you. The idea of keeping cool, folks. Take a deep breath, be calm, control your emotions. Panicking is the last thing you should do in these stressful situations. So now let's move on to commitment. Oh boy. I have a lot of experience with this one. Okay, tell me it isn't just me, all right? I lose a tennis match, a really important one. You know, I'm devastated. I don't talk to anyone in my family for days as a result of just misery, sorrow, anger, dejection. Okay, that's a bit too dramatic, but you get the point. I then tell myself that, oh yeah, this is my plan every day. I'm gonna do 30 push-ups every single day, go for a run for 30 minutes, play tennis three hours every single day, and I'm gonna do my core on top of all of that. And every single time I'll walk on the tennis court, boss music will start playing. Seriously, that's what goes on in my head. So, the next morning comes along, and your alarm rings at five in the morning. Ugh. And then you just go, snooze, snooze, snooze. You eventually go for a run because you feel guilty, and you promised yourself that this will be your daily regime. But then the time comes to do your 30 push-ups, and right then and there you say, okay, I can't do this every day. So, what do you need to do? Right, forget about the boss music when you, pl when you bleh. forget about the boss music playing when you enter the court because your promise to yourself lasted in three hours. You gave up. You couldn't push yourself to the limit. You didn't have the right motivation to go and pull that regime off. So you may be wondering, what do I need to do in order to tackle this? How would a mentally tough person respond to losing this tennis match? They would set achievable goals. Goals that wouldn't make them feel overwhelmed, but at the same time would give them a short-term destination so that they can monitor their progress. To achieve this goal, they would set routines and will continue to persevere and do everything in their power to achieve this goal. And after they finish one goal, oh no, it isn't just a one and done affair. By doing it once, they will do it again and again and again until their mindset becomes as strong as a rock and they will find a way every single time. So, Block out the negative self-talk. By negative messages, I mean, oh, I cannot do this, this is impossible. I'm too dumb to understand this concept. I'm too lazy to practice my sheet music. I'll do it later. If you do this, you will just keep going down and down and down and down until you hit the bottom of the pit. Everyone has done this before. In fact, even I still do it. Just this morning, I was like, what is this rubbish trigonometry identities or whatever you call it? It's not rubbish. The messages in your head are. You need to ignore them as cliche as it sounds. You need to tell yourself, I can do this. I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna practice, and I'm gonna continue to work hard. So now, we move on to challenge. This is a big one. It is the extent you're willing to push yourself towards a goal despite all the obstacles you're going to have to face. Now, this raises a lot of questions. How dedicated are you? How hard are you gonna work? Do you do you have the right motivation, the passion, the drive to push past these boundaries? Are you willing to make sacrifices to achieve your dreams? And most importantly, are you willing to embrace change? Do you have what it takes to get back up from the setbacks, to seize the opportunity to learn, to conquer this mountain? People who are mentally tough see challenges as an opportunity to learn. They find ways to adapt to these challenges, and they look at their failures to be lessons to be learned from and opportunities for growth. So finally, we have confidence. That wraps up our four C's diagram. So let's take Muhammad Ali, for example. Since the beginning, Muhammad Ali would claim that he was the greatest. He believed in himself, and he did arguably become the greatest boxer of all time. 
You can have people believe in you, and that helps. But if you don't believe in yourself, you will never, ever, ever be able to move forward. As Muhammad Ali said, it is the mountains ahead to climb that wear you out. It's the pebble in your very own shoe. Now, please keep in mind, if someone on a plane goes, oh my God, is there a doctor on board? We need to deliver this baby. Please do not go. I can deliver this baby. I'm confident. Poor mother, by the way. So in order to tell your brain to become more confident, block out the noise. Ignore your brain telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that. Ignore the people who bring you down, saying that whatever you're trying to do is too big a feat. Take pride in what you've already achieved. Focus on your strengths, amplify them, and most importantly, don't be afraid to fall. It will resist you from growing. It will hinder your self-confidence. Failure isn't the end of the road, it is the beginning. Remember, failure makes you stronger. Developing your mental toughness is the key to success, be it at home, at school, on a football field, a science lab, a kitchen even, or any place or scenario in the world. If you develop these four attributes and look at your obstacles dead in the eye, holding your head up high, not only will you climb this mountain, you will enjoy climbing it. Thank you. Samira Talwar, ladies and gentlemen with all the four speakers presenting their ideas. We have concluded the TEDx British School Jakarta 2022. We certainly hope that you learned something from it and you can take away practical tips and examples for your everyday lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that in the future, you can, only, you can not only participate as a, an observer, as an audience, but you yourself, could also participate as speakers in the stage. There are a lot of TEDx opportunities in the future, maybe not only at British School Jakarta, maybe at your universities in the future, and we certainly hope that you one day could also experience the thrill of sharing your ideas to the world. Now, we would like also to thank the mentors that helped to uh, enhance the speakers, the topics, the materials, and also the secondary leadership team, and certainly the four speakers. Please welcome them once again. Harry Cash, Kiara, Evie, and Samira. We hope that you guys enjoy the event. My name is Chris, and as on behalf of the TEDx committee, we thank you for your attendance today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Signing out. Thank you.